as a fan of pro wrestling, and not only just pro wrestling, but independent wrestling, what is a better mix than some horror and some good old graps? Folks, I'm very excited to get into this one, and you should be too. Without further ado, let's get into my review of the new film, Dark Match. What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel today for another review and today we're going to be reviewing the new film Dark Match which makes its world premiere this year at Fantasia Festival 2024. So this is by the director Lowell Dean uh, who recently did the films Wolf Cop and Wolf Cop 2 uh, which was back in 2017 at Fantasia by the way and now he returns this year with the world premiere of Dark Match which stars the legendary Chris Jericho, who is also the executive producer of this film. So for me, I think not only because I'm a fan of pro wrestling, why this was a draw, but when you see somebody like Chris Jericho attached to it, it definitely adds another level of, um, of just notoriety to the potential of what the film could be. Um, and and then there may be some potential for some good old wrestling involved as well, too, because for somebody who has been around for so many uh, decades at this rate, uh, Chris Jericho knows the wrestling ring in and out. But another thing you have to attest with Chris Jericho is he understands character work. He is one of the best wrestlers, if not the best wrestlers of all time, in order to be able to change characters and adapt through generations. So um, Chris Jericho, executive producer and, and, and one of the stars of this film. Then you just start to look, look deep into the cast and you start seeing some other names that whether you know or you will be talking about after starting with Aisha Issa. Uh, who plays Misbehave. I mean, she's your, she's your lead. She's your star. She makes this film go. Um, she is alongside of Stephen Uck, um, Sarah Canning, uh, my guy, Jonathan Cherry, who has blessed us for so many years in the horror genre. You may know him from the iconic Final Destination 2, House of the Dead, Goon. I mean, this guy is legendary, and he did not disappoint in this. Um, his character, Rusty, absolutely is one of my favorite characters in this. His performance is fantastic. Um, but yeah, the list goes on and on. There's a lot of good names attached to this film um, that does not disappoint. Now, as far as the aesthetic of the film, it sort of gives you that grindhouse feel, but by all means, as of recently, it really felt like it could have been like an installment in the VH94 um, anthologies in there. Um, one of the different stories within VHS 94. It definitely felt like that outside of the aspect ratio that that is shot in. It 100% felt like it could have been a part of that collection um, because of its unique story, the cinematography, like it just, this, this, this story. And although I'm talking about wrestling and horror, like, oh, I've seen that before. No, no, no. The story by all means feels absolutely refreshing and unique to its own. So, you know, it felt like it could have been in that collection with VHS 94, which I think is, if not my favorite, one of my favorites for sure. Um, but nonetheless, in this though, we got to talk about this because it, it, it for, for you pro wrestling fans, it's very simple. A small town wrestling company accepts a well-paying gig in a backwoods town only to learn too late that the community is run by a mysterious cult leader and it with uh, devious plans for their match. So when we talk about that cult leader, you go back to Chris Jericho. He is the leader. So seeing Chris Jericho in this sort of like cult leader-ish uh, role and all his, uh, even like his, um, almost in terms of how he's even uh, speaking to everybody and announcing and organizing and so on, like seeing him in that sort of stance is by all means like a role that just seems perfectly made for him. Like he he nails that to the T. Um, not enough convincing for me to join, but he certainly is so good at it. You may actually think he does this in real life. Um, but... I also will say that, like, because there's so many different unique characters in it, because you can go back to uh, Aisha, who's misbehaved. She's a wrestler, a part of this wrestling company, and now she just starts to understand what's happening around her and what's at stake. We actually see a, 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 a person 
who may not have been overly confident in her wrestling, but then actually started to gain confidence in her wrestling, and then became becomes very much suspicious of the things that's around her to ultimately becoming the leader of her independent company. So, like, you, you see a lot of character development in these characters, as well as even the cult leader in the leader in Chris Jericho's character himself, you see him start to become more and more mischievous in his actions. You, you see him start to become, you know, more problematic as it comes. And, like, it's not really, I know he's a big name, but, like, it's really not focused on him. But I'm just saying, like, considering, like, the good versus evil aspect, like, you can feel that force building over the duration of the film. Um, I also thought for a moment, because I was calling this film Deathmatch for a little while, because that's actually a thing. It easily could have been that as well. Um, but nonetheless, it's still a cool concept with the title Dark Match. So, yeah, Jericho's good. Aisha's good. The cast is good. Now, as far as the wrestling, there's not much of it. But the brutality. <laughs> it was okay. And it continued to get better um, as the film progressed. So, you could definitely expect the gore, the brutality. You know, a little bit of Saw-ish, shall I say, at moments of this film. Um, I also thought that they kept the film pretty practical. You know, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think there was much CGI in there. And I also don't think there was things that was really extending your, uh, extending disbelief in things. Like, I felt like they kept things very grounded at times, which again goes back to sort of some of the, um, the, some of the, the films within the collection of VHS 94, which is why, like, I know those are shorts, but this is easily something that would have this followed suit in terms of that identity for that collection. So, you know, I, I, I felt like they kept things pretty practical, which easily kept me invested, um, even to the point that they, that they were independent wrestlers and Chris Jericho could have came in there and told them how to work a match easily and they would have been flawless. But the fact that, like, even in that aspect, you can see that everybody wasn't polished because that's why people work independence. And you can see them slowly but surely getting better at what they do. So I, I, I thought they did a really good job in keeping things um, as they should, like keeping things in a way that just makes sense in terms of the storytelling here. Now, the next thing I will say too, is that they leave you with a crazy cliffhanger. I wouldn't be mad if they wanted to do more with this film. I think there's certainly much more they can do with this film and everything that's kind of going on. So if that's what they want to do, then sign me up for it. So I thought they did a, a overall telling a good story, but yet giving us um, a sense of maybe hope that they might want to tell more story within this. That would be absolutely great. You know, if they're going to do Dark Match 2, I, I don't know. I don't know if the title of that works, but like nonetheless, like, yeah, sign me up for a sequel one way or another here. Um, then the soundtrack. The soundtrack is really good. Of course, you got uh, uh, music from Fozzie, which is Chris Jericho's band. But the, the soundtrack up and down is good. Definitely enjoyed that. Um, I believe that should probably be released um, along with this film whenever it gets its release. But I listen, I, I, I thought this film very much was going to be at least entertaining. But I'm here to say, like, I thought the film was actually good. Um, you know, as an independent film, there's obviously little things you can tweak and polish a little bit. But overall, from beginning to end, you you will enjoy this film. Um, the performances, again, up and down the board. Uh, Sarah Canning, who I didn't mention, plays Kate the Great. She's great. Um, you know, a little bit of graps in there as well, too. Aisha, as I said, is our true lead. She's fantastic. Steven Ugg is mean Joe Lean, another person that really shakes things up a little bit. Uh, my, my, uh, excuse me, Jonathan Cherry as Rusty, Chris Jericho as the leader. I mean, up and down the board. Mo, Mo Jabari as Enigma. Like, there, there's so many folks that really come together, even in the smallest scenes, really makes their the best of their moment. So, you know, no bias as a pro wrestling fan. This is just overall a good film for anybody who loves uh, horror, who's looking for something that is refreshing. You know, they're not just doing the same old, same old that you've seen before, you know, and if you if you love wrestling and you love that good old classic grindhouse feel, like, like this, this is that. This is definitely that. This is absolutely that. So keep your eyes glued because Dark Match, which although makes his world premiere at Fantasia Festival 2024, I'm sure will be coming to your screens very, very soon. And that needs to be on your radar. With that being said, jump in the comments. Let me know your thoughts and excitement for this one. And stick around for more reviews and content here at Big Old Belt Media very soon.